Yo YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to the Jeep and Daily channel. How is everybody doing today? I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know before you click off, this is not going to be a video of me just talking to the camera the whole time. You're not going to see my face the whole time. I'm going to lay over some old off-road clips that I have throughout the past year or so, so you guys can watch that or re-watch it if you've already seen some of them. But the main point of today's video is going to be talking about my rough country lift on my Jeep that as of today, it has officially been two years since I put the lift on the Jeep. And because people tend to talk down on rough country, I'm gonna try helping people out on what they should look for when they're buying a lift, what lift to look for and all that. But mainly we're gonna be talking about the rough country lift and what other brands or how you should go about lifting your Jeep, I guess, to save some money and time like I did. But this is from day one of when the Jeep was lifted. Um, as you can tell, it's got stock tires on it and wheels. I think they were 235, 75s or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's a four and a half inch lift with stock tires because I wanted the lift on and I drove it like that for like a day or two before I found a set of 31s, which if I can find the picture, I will also insert that of what the Jeep looks like on 31s. But if you did not know, the lift kit is a four and a half inch rough country at a leaf lift. So that means we just slid a leaf in between the leaf springs to kind of bo boost it up. And it also came with a lift shackle. Um, I would like to say it was probably a two inch lift shackle. I have no idea what they offer or what they send with the lift kit, but the lift kit is the full at a leaf lift with fixed lower control arms. You use your stock upper control arms and I got a rough country adjustable track bar and obviously the four and a half inch coils and the four and a half inch shocks. So because you're adding a leaf to the stock leaf springs, depending on how newer or older the leaf springs are, they might be worn out. So that's where a lot of your sag in the rear comes from is from those worn out leaves. And also because you're adding in a leaf between those. So it's not really a, you're not doing a full leaf. So don't, if you're going to buy an add a leaf lift kit, don't expect your rear to sit higher or to sit level with the front of your Jeep. So what I did to fix the sag in the rear is I eventually bought a one and a half inch lift block. It was anywhere between one and two inch lift block for the rear. So I bought that lift block and we stuck it in under the leaf springs to fix the sag and then it looked perfectly normal. The Jeep didn't sag anymore. It sat level with the front. If you did not know, about seven to eight months ago, we installed Rubicon Express three and a half inch full leafs into the rear and we took the block out. So now the Jeep sits up higher in the rear than it does in the front. So it gives it kind of like a little of an old school muscle car stance look basically. But other than that, the lift kit has held together. Nothing has ever broken on it. No bushings, no bolts, no nuts, no nothing has come loose. Nothing has broke. Nothing's come undone, whatever. And also that Adelief held up pretty well for the year, year and a half that it was on there. But I was just tired of having my Jeep look a little derpy in the rear. And also because I believe the rear leaf springs the stock ones were weighing the Jeep down from its full flexing ability. And also I wanted the Jeep to ride a little better because obviously the stock leaf springs that were already worn plus that add leaf was it just rode so terrible and it was very stiff. So we added the, or we did the Rubicon express springs in the rear and it actually helped out a lot and it looks better. It flexes better and it drives better. Now my only complaint with the lift right now is now I'm learning more um, and I'm getting more into off-roading and I want to see my Jeep flex more and more, but I still feel like my Jeep is not flexing as much as it possibly could be. And I believe it is because of the shocks are resisting it or that it's holding the axles up. 
I am on 33 inch tires and at full flex, they're not even touching the stock fender flare and they're not rubbing the fender. So I feel like with the 33 inch tires, I should definitely be rubbing the tires on the inside of the fenders at a four and a half inch lift. So I believe the shocks are holding it back. Also, there is no sway bar front or rear. So there's nothing besides the shocks and the lift kit itself holding it back from flexing to its full ability. But yeah, that's basically like just a quick review of the lift or how it's been to me. Um, it doesn't ride the best. I don't know if that's just rough country sting. It rides good down the highway. My Jeep does 80 down the highway perfectly fine. It goes straight until a little bit of gust of wind like any other vehicle or boxy vehicle. The wind will get you. But when you do hit bumps, depending on the bump or how you hit it or even your tire pressure, it can stun you a little bit. You can definitely feel it. It hits hard sometimes, like going over some train tracks. But it all also depends on the size of the hole, how fast you're going, and the pressure in your tires. But yeah, that's about it for the rough country lift and how it's been for me. It's still holding up. I still plan on keeping it and not changing anything really as of now. If something does change, you guys know you will see a video on it and you will be updated about that. If you are new to Jeeps or off-roading or whatever, or you just want the best bang for your buck, I don't think I have ever seen a cheaper lift kit than Rough Country. And... When you pay for stuff, sometimes you pay for the quality and sometimes you're just paying for the name. Now, when it comes to Rough Country, they do have a lifetime warranty. So if anything breaks, it is warrantied. Um, or I guess if anything would go bad, it's under warranty. So you can get that replaced for free. And that was that's one of the, also one of the reasons that I chose Rough Country is because I saw that, that it had a lifetime warranty. Now, when I lifted my Jeep, I was in high school still. I was working part-time when I lifted both of my Jeeps. I was working part-time. So if something broke, I wanted it to be cheap to replace or free to replace. So that's part of the, also part of the reason I went with this Rough Country lift. Now, like I said, Rough Country is on the cheaper end. And it also depends on the lift you get. You can get a three-inch lift. You can get a four, four and a half, five, five and a half. There's all types of different lifts that you can get from all types of different companies. And that all the prices range from company to company, from lift to lift, from what you buy with that lift. Now, there you can get just shocks and lift blocks. You can get coils and springs, shocks, control arms. You can kind of just piece the lift together from websites from what they offer. Now, I think my four and a half inch lift, actually, I will look right now. So on Rough Country's website, a four and a half inch lift, which is what I have, the Adelief and everything included, control arms, uh, coils, shocks, all the nuts, bolts, bushings, the shackles, and even the sway bar drop. Or I believe that was the sway bar drop. I don't really remember. But everything is priced at $500. I believe shipping was free. And on top of that, I think that's also one of the Rough Country is the cheapest lift out there. If there's cheaper for stuff like that, I'd love to know. I'd love maybe one day to buy it, review it, and put it on another XJ, but we will see as time goes on. So if you are also curious to what size tires you can fit on this Adelief four and a half inch lift, um, I started with 31s. I ran 32s. Now, if you go to an 1150 tire and wider, you're going to need a spacer or a tire or a wheel with offset because those tires will definitely rub your control arms. Um, so yeah, anything 1150 and wider, you'll need to have the tire stick out more away from the inside of the body because they will rub the control arms. Now, that being said, with the Adelief, the 32 inch tires and the 33 inch tires when the Jeep was flexing, it wouldn't have much flex before it would start to rub on the rear fender flare or the inside of the fender. Now, like I said, I fixed my sag issue with the lift block. Originally, it stopped the Jeep from rubbing 32s, but it would still rub 33s when it would flex in the rear until we put those Rubicon Express springs in. So now the Jeep's setup is three and a half inch full lift springs leaf springs in the rear with the rough country 
shackle that was included with that four and a half inch at leaf lift and stock shock or it's not stock rough country four and a half inch shocks the four and a half inch rough country coils and the fixed lower control arms with stock upper control arms if you guys seen last video or two videos ago i do have short arms now we haven't gotten around to putting that in i'm still undecided if i want to sell them or put them on the jeep so if you guys were looking at buying a lift and you've seen that rough country was cheap but you also see so many people talk bad about rough country it's actually not that terrible like i said i've had mine on my jeep for two years I've put about 30 to 40,000 miles on the Jeep, maybe 25 to 35,000 miles on the Jeep with the lift kit on. I've had no issues besides the sag because of that Adelie. leaf. So if you are worried about your Jeep looking a little goofy in the sag in the rear, I would suggest going with a full spring in the rear. Or if you want to keep it on the cheaper end, do the add a leaf and then add a block to the rear. So yeah, guys, that's like my two-year summary of how the rough country lift has held up if you guys are stopping in for the first time make sure you hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up and also we are almost at 600 subscribers you guys are awesome i couldn't be more grateful it has been a year's worth of journey because i think at this time last year we were right around 100 subscribers or we just passed the 100 subscriber mark. So thank you guys so much. We have gained over 500 or almost 500 in a year. And that's awesome. I would love to make more content and keep making more content for you guys. But also it would be greatly appreciated if you guys shared any of my videos or shared my channel or the channel name, anything that would help out the channel. But yeah, guys, enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you guys next Wednesday for another upload. Peace out.